What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we'll look at user authentication for our blog with Django and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at user authentication, but before we get started, if you like this video and wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, which really helps out the channel, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, we looked at ordering these posts, and I went ahead today and added a new post so we can see that our ordering by the blog date uh, worked. So this is the latest one, and so that's cool. In this video, we're going to start to set up user authentication. Now, this is probably going to take a couple of videos because this is... A little bit more intricate than some of the stuff we've done before. It's still not hard, but there's just a few more steps involved. And what I mean by user authentication is we need to be able to log into our blog and you know make posts. As it is right now, anybody can just stumble along if we push this up onto the internet. You know, right now it's just on our computer, but eventually we'll push it up online. And when we do that, anybody could come along and just create a post here. And we don't want that. We just want us or somebody we trust a user to be able to make a blog post and same thing with editing right now anybody can edit any blog post anybody can delete any blog post uh yeah we got the delete button right uh so we that's no good we need some sort of authentication so that people can so that we can determine whether somebody is able has the you know authority i guess to make a post or delete a post or edit a post and we're going to use the Django authentication system. It's baked right into Django. We can just sort of tap into it. And so it's not that hard to do this, but it's just like I said, it takes a few steps. So we're going to make this to where we can sign up as a new user. Remember way back at the beginning of this course, we created a super user for the admin area, right? If you go to admin, we get this admin area. If we log in, we see there's users. We have one user admin, John Elder. So, and we did all of this from the admin area here. Well, now we're gonna do this so that we can sign up as a new user from the website itself. So if you wanna allow people to join your blog, join your website and make blog posts themselves, they can do that. Uh, you can use this these same steps for any website. If you wanna create any sort of membership website where you want users to be able to log, sign up and then log in, you can use these same steps that we're gonna go in the next couple of videos to do that. So it's very uh, sort of a good thing to learn and uh, we're gonna fly through it pretty quickly, but uh, it's, it's not too difficult. So let's just get started. First things first, we need to create a new app. So if we look at our code up until now, you know, we've got just one app, this the blog app, and it's got all of our stuff in it. And you know, with Django, everything is an app, right? Your website is an app. Now we're gonna create a user authentication system and I wanna create a separate app to handle all of that stuff. It's just sort of what you wanna do. I don't think you have to do that, but it's a good idea to do that. So let's head back over to our terminal, control C to break out of this. And remember we're in C, simple blog slash a blog, cause I'm terrible at naming things. So if we LS, we can see the manage.py file. So that's how you know you're in the right spot. Make sure your virtual environment is turned on and uh, we're good to go. So now we just need to create a new app and we'll do this the same way we created the last app. It's just Python, manage.py, start app, and then we wanna name it. So what do we wanna name this app? Um, we're gonna create members, like members can sign up. So I'm just gonna call this members. And now we hit enter and boom, that should work. Now I'm just gonna run the server again, just to make sure it's, it's running. All right, now head back over to our code and you'll notice we now have this members directory and it has all the same files that are the blog directory had when it started out. But you'll notice it doesn't have a urls.py file just like our the blog app didn't have a urls.py file. So we need to create one of those. So let's head over to members, right click new file and then let's just go ahead and save as and this will be urls.py. And we can actually go to our old urls.py file if we want and just copy this whole thing and paste it into the new one. Now we don't need this thing here with all of our imported views because we don't have those views anymore and we don't need all of these paths. We're gonna create our own, but for now this will work. Okay, and you know, anytime you create a new app, you need to add it to your settings.py file just like we did when we created the, the blog app 
at the beginning of this course. So let's head over to a blog here and look at our settings. And we could just come down here to installed apps. And here's the blog app that we added earlier. Now we just want to add members and put your comma there at the end. Go ahead and save that. And we can close that. Now also in our main a blog directory, we have our original urls.py file. And we need to tweak that because when we added our the blog one, we had to add a path to its urls.py file. We need to do the same thing for our members app that we just created, but it's going to be a little bit different than than this one. So what we need to do is just go path. Now this is going to be we're going to point this to our members directory, plural. And now we want to include and this is where it's a little bit different here. We're not going to point it right away to our members.urls as you might expect. First, we're going to go django.contrib dot auth dot urls and this is the oops we need a period there dot so the django contrib auth is the django authentication system and it has a little package in there called urls that will take care of all your urls for you so you need a login page a logout page a registration page it will handle those urls for you for the most part so we're going to use those but now we also need to do just like we did here with our uh, the blog app. We're going to put that in here, but instead of the blog, it's going to be members. Because that's the name of the app we just created. So why are we doing two of them? Well, oh, we got to actually put members here as well. So why are we doing two of these URLs that point to the same place? Well, because First, the order of operations here is, is important. We need this one listed first because Django will try and use these authentication URLs that come with this package. And then if it sees something else besides those, if we create some other type of page, it needs to know where to go. And in that case, we want it to go to our members URL page, which we just created right here and it doesn't have anything in it just yet. So, OK, we're good to go there. So let's come back here and let's close this. Oop, better save this first. And uh, let's close this new or this old URLs.py file. Make sure I save that one. And OK, so next we need some actual pages like a login page, a registration page and stuff like that. So that means templates. Now, in the past, we would put them in the let's see. Let's clean this up a little bit. Let's go to the blog in our templates directory in the blog. But we're not in the blog now. We're doing registration stuff. We're doing authentication stuff. So we need a, a templates directory in our new members app right here. So let's go to members, right click and create new folder. And we'll call this templates. Now inside of here, we want another one. And I'll show you why in just a minute. So let's create a new file or a new folder, I mean. And let's call this registration. And so now in our members templates, we now have this registration directory and let's create a couple of files in here. Let's create a new file and let's call this one file save as login .html. And let's create another one called new file file save as registration .html. That's pretty much all we need. We need to be able to register if we want new people to sign up for our blog so that they can make blog posts. And when they are registered, we need them to be able to log in. Basically, uh, we'll, we'll make a link to where they can log out, but we don't need a page for that, right? We just need a, a URL that logs them out. But we do need a login page and a registration page. So, OK, I'm going to go to my, I don't know, article detail page. Mm, no, we need a form. So let's go to our add post page in our the blog directory. So let's go templates. And that was add post. Yeah, so let's copy all of this text, or all of this code, and head back over to our login page and paste it in. And here at the top for the title, we just want login. Now this extends base will find our base.html file in our old the blog app. So we can leave that the way it is. And then for our add post, this looks good. And instead of post, we want this to say login. And instead of up here, instead of it saying add post, we want this to say login. But the rest of this should be fine. And if you can hear some background noise, I don't know if you can hear that or not, but they're repaving my street 
on my block, so there's a little bit of noise back there. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but apologize if you do hear it, but we're just gonna push on. So, all right, I'm gonna copy all of this and head over to our new registration.html file. Let's paste that in. And instead of saying login here, let's say register. And up here, let's just say register. And down here, let's say register. And that's really all we need to do. We're gonna be using these same form as forms that we did back in the old app. And these won't be styled right now, but we can style them later if we want. Uh, but for now, this is fine. Okay, so save this, save this, and we can go ahead and close these files. We're pretty much done with them. Now, let's head over to our views.py file. And you'll notice in our members directory, we have a new views.py file. And it is completely empty because it should be. It's a brand new app. And up here at the top, we need to import a bunch of things. So we need from Django.views import generic. We're going to use some generic views. We need from Django.contrib.auth dot forms import now we need to create a user so we need the user creation form and just like before when we log in or register we need to reverse lazy to wherever we want to redirect to so from django dot urls import reverse underscore lazy okay so now we need a class and what we're going to create first is our registration form so Let's go user register view. And we're going to pass in generic dot create view. We can we can import that here from generic, right? And now we need a form class. And this is going to be our user creation. Well, let me just copy this from right here. So that I make sure I spell it right. User creation form, right? This will handle the actual form itself. And then we need to point it to the template. Now these are very much like our old views, right? We designate the form class, the template, and the success URL, right? So uh, that will be in registration slash register.html. And that is just this templates slash registration. It already knows to look in templates but we put it in this registration directory just to sort of keep it separate from this templates directory down here so it's not confusing to, the, to Django, right? And slash register.html, which is that file we just created right here. Okay, so that looks good. And then finally, we need a success underscore URL. And where do we wanna send this? Well, we wanna send this to reverse lazy and then log in. Why? Well, once we register for as a new user, the first thing you're going to want to do after you register is log in so that you can start using the app. So, I mean, we could send this to home if we wanted to, but we'll just send it to log in. Okay, so that looks pretty good. What else do we need here? Let's see. I think that looks good. Now we can go to our urls.py file. Now, this is the brand new one we just created. It doesn't have anything in it at all yet. And up here at the top, we just like we did before, we need from.views import whatever that view is we just created so we call it user, user register view so we import that there and then our pattern is going to be a path and of course we want this to go to register slash well not of course but that makes sense to me uh let's see register and this is going to be the user register view dot as underscore view same sort of format we've done in our other views.py file right and then let's name this thing and let's call this register and comma. Okay, so that's really the only URL we're gonna need. And now we can use this register name to create a link. So let's head back to our old base.py file. And that'll be in our old templates directory. Here it is base.py. And let's look at our navbar code. Here we've got this add post link. We also now want a register link. So I'm just gonna copy all of this and paste it in. And I'm gonna copy this again. And instead of it saying add post, let's call this register. And we want this to point to register. Okay, so let's save this and 
see if this is working. So make sure our server's running. Head back to our website, hit reload, boom, that seems to work. If we click this register, uh-oh, we have a problem. Did I spell template name wrong? What did I do? All right, let's go back to our views.py file. Ah, I did spell template name wrong. Template underscore name. Why didn't you tell me? Because <laughs> when we look at our old views.py file for our old app, we always use template name, right? Template name, template name, template name. It is Monday morning here in Vegas, and so I just did that wrong. <laughs> All right, save this, head back over here, and let's try this again. Boom, reach. All right, so template does not exist. Members register. Hmm, did I spell something wrong here? Hmm, yes. I'm <laughs> All right, so this should be register.html, not registration. Okay, so that works. It is definitely Monday. So, all right, hit reload, boom, we got register. And we can actually create a username now. Very cool. Now, if we try this, well, actually, first, let's create a link up here to log in real quick. So, let's head back to our base.html and let's copy this. Now, we haven't created a login URL yet, have we? But we don't need one because we can just type in login here. And remember in our original urls.py file, let's see, in a blog, we created these Django contrib auth URLs. Login is one of those URLs. So we can just reference it. So let's go ahead and save that and come back here and hit reload. And now we have a login link up here. And if we try and log in, remember using our old login, we're gonna get an error because we haven't set up a redirection thing yet. So let's do that real quick. And that's super easy. We just come back to our original settings.py file. Well, our only settings.py file. And down here at the bottom, we can just kind of tab down a little bit. And all in capitals, we just go login underscore re redirect underscore URL. And we just want to set this equal to home. Now we need two of these. So I'm going to copy this and paste. We need one for login. We also need one for log out. So I'm just going to go ahead and save this. And all right, that should work. So let's head back over here, give this another try. Log in. Oops. And I, you notice I typed in the wrong password, so we get some validation. That's very cool. Give it another try, boom, and now we're logged in. Now you can't tell that we're logged in because we need to make now some changes to the code to reflect that. But we can now also register. So let's create a new one. Let's create Bob and I'm just gonna create a password and register and boom, that works. Now it sends us to our login page here. And if we wanted to, we could log in there, but let's go look at our admin area. And we've already logged in and we can click on users and now we have this new user here. So we have our old one and we also now have Bob, right? So that's pretty cool. Now Bob doesn't have any of these other things listed, but uh, he can log in and log out. And I'm just gonna click Bob here and delete because we really don't need that. I just wanted to show you that uh, that works. So, all right, we are now done. Like, that's it as far as setting up the user authentication. Now, in order for us to sort of use that, we need to tweak our code. So, for instance, when we click this add post page, we need to create some logic that says, hey, is the person logged in? If so, show this page. If not, don't, right? And same thing with these things, uh, these links. If the user's logged in, show the edit link. If not, don't. And I think we'll start to look at that in the next video. This video is getting a little bit long, so we'll do that in the next video. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 40 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and we'll see you in the next video.